I sat in church yesterday and I thought of you. The pastor spoke a prayer and I thought of you. See, he said sometimes that was all parents could do, pray. And I began to wonder just how much you prayed for me. Did you kneel on your quaking knees on a cold 3 a.m. morning asking God to turn your empty cabinets into miracles? Did you ever watch us wide-eyed and mischief-filled and pray that the harshness of the world would hit us just a little lighter than the average child? On those early Sunday morning walks to church, did you pray that our feet would stay sturdy as tree trunks in the midst of a storm, but fearless as a breeze in its travel? Did your hands, did they ever meet in silent agreement to shelter your whispers in the dark as if they were being molded just for him? Did your lips ever part to wrap your words in power to march in opposition of our own fears before we even knew what our fears were? I sometimes wonder when you made us pray at bedside, did you wrap our pleas in your faith before sending them skyward? Because in our innocence, we did not know it was your faith that drove you. It was your faith that kept us your words, sculpted from frustration, desperation, and expectation that kept us. Grandma, I sometimes can't help but think that you looked upon us flawed and brilliant in your eyes and sometimes wish things were different for us. How often did tears break the levees of your eyelids out of fear because you knew one day that something outside of our control may leave us scarred and bent? Did you ever look up on our smiles and pray that God will continue to live in them? And what of your own fears? Did you ever give in to them? How often did you feel as if your prayers fell on the ears of the deaf? I mean, I highly doubt you prayed for wealth more than you did health, for riches more than you did happiness, for speed more than you did strength. Because even in the midst of our mess, if you didn't catch us then, you always caught us in the end. I think I still got welts from those belts on my legs, but not really. Now, I'll never proclaim, I'll never proclaim to be perfect. You never hear me say I'm always right. Can't say that none of my steps were never missteps because even when I had missteps, there was always a prayer in place. Whenever I opened my mouth to see you negativity, there was always a prayer of chastisement. Whenever my mind strays to insecurity, there was always a prayer to reinforce my backbone. Whenever my enemies rose up against me, there was a prayer for guidance to reach God in the snakes. Whenever doubt danced across my knuckles, whenever my voice could barely stumble from my throat, whenever my limbs could not lift from my bed of afflictions, my mind could not free itself of its addictions, your prayers were always there. They met me head on like a collision. But ain't nobody get hurt. I was always taught from them. And you hardly ever said a thing, to me anyway. But when I did get hurt, and you saw me at my worst, tears streaming, hiccups jumping, hands trembling, you had my back. That's how I know you slid in a prayer to God asking him to make you into the person that I could turn to when everyone else could just judge me and leave me. When I was little, I remember thinking that you would never need me. More than likely outlive me because you could do everything. And it might seem strange for a boy of six or seven, but you always led me to believe that I was different. Grandma, I strive to be like you today, looking past myself and praying others through. So, so Grandma, today I pray, not for me, but for you. And even then, I promise, I can hear you feeding me the words, just like you used to.